Our next guest, a blockbuster movie star, writer, director, world championship wrestler, and similar to President Trump, you can't kill our next guest. He's a good guy, kind guy. What's up, David Arquette? How are you, David? I'm good. How are you? Excellent, man. Congrats on this new movie, uh, The Good Half. You got a Jonas brother and a director that's got some Coppola DNA, so it's going to be successful. It's got to be, right? Yeah, it's a really fun film. I mean, they balance uh, the humor and the sort of sadness of losing someone in a really wonderful way. The director, Robert Schwartzman, has a really great eye and really good sense for comedy and music, and he really crafts a film that I think the audiences are really going to enjoy. How much music were you hearing on, on the set between uh, having a Jonas brother and Schwartzman, who's, who's in his, uh, a, a band himself called Rooney? Did you get a lot of good music on the set? A little bit. It's funny, when I've been promoting the movie, my character's name Rick, so uh, I've been like picking a lot of Rick songs. Rick Springfield, Rick Ansley. So <laughs> I keep getting people to sort of like click on the video and then it'll be never going to give you up. Oh, never going to let you down. <laughs> that, that's a good one. Yeah. You got, you guys also have one of the hottest babysitters of all time and uh, Elizabeth Shue, uh, who was cast in, in this movie. She's still beautiful as ever. She sure is. She's a wonderful actress. I loved working with her. And, uh, it was funny. We were talking about our relationship because we only had one actual scene where we were working together. And, you know, just, I don't know, it was just so funny. Like, why do you think these two people are together? Because everyone's kind of dumping on my character. And we, we we sort of came to our reasons why they were they were together, which is pretty fun. The new movie is called The Good Half. Uh, nationwide screenings at theaters uh, starting coming up on July 23rd and the 25th. And you can check your local theaters and go see our guest, David Arquette, in the new movie, The Good Half. I'd like to ask you about your uh, your dad, who was a very accomplished actor himself, uh, Louis Arquette. I was surprised to find out that he was the voice of Jimmy Superfly Snooka in the Rock and Wrestling cartoon. That was one of my favorite cartoons. Is that true? It is. I mean, it's sort of culturally uh, insensitive, obviously, since he wasn't Samoan. But, uh, yeah, he played the character. He also did, he did tons of voice work and uh, would always kind of help provide for the family through that and, you know, through his acting. It was great. Like, toward the end of his life, he got to work with Christopher Guest on uh, Waiting for Guffman and be part of that whole group. And I know that meant so much to him. Did your dad and that cartoon influence some of your love for, for wrestling? It absolutely did. I was a huge wrestling fan at that time, so for him to be a part of it, and then we went to go see some of the house shows with, you know, Andre the Giant. I mean, it was sort of a larger-than-life time for wrestling. I was just, I loved it. And then it led me to doing Ready to Rumble, <laughs> and then ultimately... uh to wrestle myself and uh i went on a you know a whole run where i independently wrestled for a couple years and you know ended up doing a documentary called you cannot kill david arquette about that experience yeah and some people may not know this that you were the wcw champion uh, about 24 25 years ago which uh which is pretty wild who ended up beating you to take the belt i know that uh, you, you won in one of the big pay-per-view matches to get the belt, but I, I don't remember who beat you. Who took the belt from you? Nobody took the belt from me. I gave the belt to Jeff Jarrett. I turned heel, and uh, I smashed a guitar on Diamond Dallas Page's head and allowed uh, Jeff Jarrett to win it, but uh, nobody took the belt from me. <laughs> <laughs> That's BS that you, you just had to give it away. But, man, that's uh, pretty impressive that you became a, a world championship wrestler. And uh, another thing that I admire about you, I, I grew up and was born in the Chicago area, and WGN, always watching the Grand Prize game, and Bozo the Clown. I'm thinking with all these new game shows, all the networks are all doing game shows. How about David Arquette as Bozo the Clown and you like bring back the Grand Prize game? Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. That is an amazing idea, and we're really interested in doing that. So we've been out there. We're doing a documentary at the moment and uh, a kid's album, and we're also planning on uh, doing a feature film in the future with a major streamer. 
you said that you're trying to help the people or change the, the people out there that think clowns are creepy to give them a second chance because clowns have kind of gotten a bad rap over the last 15 years. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the horror films out there. But, um, you know, we've, uh, we've been going around the country and, and meeting a lot of people, going to clown conventions, talking with some great clowns. We do a lot of work with Healthy Humor, an amazing clown organization that does medical clowns. Uh, provides medical clowns to 15 hospitals throughout the country. So we're uh, shining a light on all the really wonderful clowns out there doing great work. And uh, when you typically meet younger kids who aren't you know, of age to see these horror films, they l- love clowns. For the most part, you seldom see someone who's just scared of clowns. But a lot of the older generation that grew up during this time period, <laughs> you know, you'll definitely see a few people that... Uh, don't really want you to come near him. Well, people fell in love with you, I know, in the Scream movies uh, as Dewey Riley. And I read somewhere that, according to what I read, that you were your character was supposed to die in the very first movie, but the test audiences, they loved your character so much that they had to rewrite the script. Is that true? Well, uh, Wes Craven sort of was enjoying my performance, and he, he allowed me to come to the set on the sort of final uh, scene where they're wheeling my character out and he said listen david uh when they're wheeling your character out you're going to come out in the first one and you'll be dead and then the second take we're going to have you hold your thumb up and we'll see how they like you if you make it to the next movie or not and i was just like thanks wes thanks so much (laughs) and uh yeah they liked me in the test screening so they allowed me to live yeah you lived for five screams i mean that's pretty impressive five screams is that right you made it through five yeah, it it was. It was really a wonderful opportunity. I mean, working with Wes Craven was really one of the highlights of my career, and I just have so much respect for him and, and had such a wonderful time on those films. If we take the Scream franchise off the board, what is your favorite scary movie of all time, excluding Scream? Well, sometimes I say um, The Shining. I mean, I, I really enjoyed you know Stanley Kubrick's take on that. And the performances, especially from Shelley Duvall and, and, and Jack Nicholson. But um, I think Halloween as a franchise is probably my favorite. Well, hopefully this new movie maybe will become a franchise. The Good Half, nationwide screenings coming up in theaters later this week. You can check your local theaters for showings of The Good Half, starring our guest David Arquette. Last time I was out in Hollywood, I checked out that Bootsy Bellows. Uh, you, you still involved with that nightclub out there? Yeah, yeah, we sure are. I do it with an organization called Hwood Group, and uh, they're really fantastic. They have restaurants all over the city, and uh, we have a Bootsy Bellows in SoFi Stadium there for the Raiders games. I mean, uh, sorry, the Chargers games. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself, and um, yeah, so and, and some of the concerts there. So yeah, we're really uh, we love that. And the, the theme of those clubs is like uh, trying to uh, do it up like Sinatra's house in Palm Springs. Is, is that true? Yeah, the style for this last remodel was definitely uh, Rat Pack inspired. And are you still out there playing the kindness game? Because I think people need to be more kind now <laughs> more than ever. Are you still playing that game? Absolutely. Absolutely. Kindness is the key to happiness. And in the relaunch of Bozo, we have someone who's called his royal kindness, the king of kindness. And uh, he always says kindness is the key. Well, thanks for being so kind with your time, uh, David. I'm a big fan, and I'm going to go see the new movie, The Good Half, in theaters uh, coming up here in just a couple of days. Good luck with the new movie, and uh, thanks again for being so kind. Thank you for your kindness. I appreciate it. Peace out, brother.